live. Hello. Hello, everyone. We're here for... Liberty, liberty live. Liberty, liberty live. We're live. Um, what's up, Mags? How- color. We're, we're two, two days in a freaking row. I'm already sick yeah. of you, and I've only seen you for an hour of that time. <laughs> Um, <laughs> wow, you are so mean. You mm. are absolutely so mean. After an amazing, almost perfect night of wrestling, I don't know how you can have, have been in such a bad mm. mood. Mm. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Definitely, Mags. Uh, well, hello, chat, to where who, I'm sure people will be popping in as we start. We will talk SummerSlam first in a second, then we'll be talking mm. all things the black and gold brand known as NXT and NXT TakeOver 36. Even though every time I look at that damn logo that's on this screen chat, I look at this damn logo and think it's NXT TakeOver 35 and I can't unsee it and I don't know why. It's, no, it, it's really weird. It does it does stand out as, uh, as 35 over 36. Mm-hmm. But it might be the Steph's last time in. you see it anyway. So don't oh, worry don't it. even. Steph's in the chat. Steph is a regular. Hi, what Steph. A, she is a, she's a lovely Adelaidean. She's a lovely Adelaidean. So there, there is more I'm, of us. I'm, I apologize for you for that. <laughs> to be honest, she'll probably agree. Um, if any Adelaidean knows about Adelaide, it's that it's 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 in a, a below average city. <laughs> yeah, but I'm a I'm a proud South Australian. I'm a proud South Australian. I bleed for South Australia, so nobody else fucking say it. All right, I get it. There's a lot of meth in this fucking place, but it's all right. Um. It's, it's all right. We we produce, well, I was going to say we produce winners, but they're all getting released or losing. So I can't say that we're producing winners in WWE land, at least. Um, you know, so there's that. Let's talk about SummerSlam. Why not talk about the fact that Charlotte Flair won? Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> it was just a ha, 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 ha. And and the, the match was actually really good as well. I felt the... Fantastic um, match. Yeah, I felt I thought that all three um, people in the match really brought it. Um, but yeah, it was it was something that we kind of uh, avoided uh, straight out predicting, but definitely mentioned in our predictions that it's always there. It's like a looming shadow <laughs> that Charlotte Flair may win another title, and uh, and she did. What do you know? She happened. did it. I didn't. Yeah. I, I I was like. We got to the finish of that match. Again, like you said, fanta- honestly, probably up to that point in the card, um, while we had a few a few good matches, that was probably the best up until that point. Edge and Rollins yes. took the cake, I think, of the oh. best match of the night because that was oh. very good, but we'll talk oh. about that in a minute. But the finish of the charlotte Nikki rhea match, I seen Rhea on the outside and I was like, oh, Rhea's going to come in and break this up. But then Nikki tapped and I was like, oh, it, it, this is going to be a reoccurring theme, I, talk, I say, as we talk for 10 minutes or so about SummerSlam, but it feels like WWE pressed a reset button on a lot of things, and they were like, we're starting mm-hmm. a little bit, not fresh, to like completely, but we're definitely taking a bit of a hard reset here on what's going on within our company, and I think Nikki was a casualty of that, unfortunately. We we're talking about this yesterday, Mags. We, I believe I said to you, you could have even said it to me, we talked about it at least, um, that we wanted, I wanted Nikki to get a chance to breathe, like give it a minute to like give it some time. And then if it's not working, let's take it away. But yeah. it seems, I feel like there was a, maybe I could be wrong. And this is just overanalyzing it as we're doing with wrestling, but I feel like they panicked and went, mm, let's just go with rest on our laurels here. This will work because Nikki's kind of in between reactions where she's getting a l- uh, majority cheers, a little bit booze, and I think maybe creative, whoever the powers that be went, fuck, we need to change yeah. things up. We, we we always knew that that was going to be a possibility after the reactions that they got, uh, how there was no merchandise for this character, how it was a, a character from the rest of themselves, all those kind of things usually add, add up to not very much success. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, 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 really, I actually think it was the uh, what was happening over on SmackDown that, that influenced uh, uh, WWE kind of rubber stamping what, what happened with Raw because if you've got Becky Lynch returning... Uh, at the top of the tree on SmackDown, it kind of looks odd when you've got uh, a childlike, uh, almost superhero character as as the 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 lead woman on Raw. So I think um, the 
the the the the physical look of Charlotte Flair and Becky Lynch as the two top women in, in your company um, means more to WWE than Becky Lynch and Nikki Ash, unfortunately for for Nick. And it's it is sad because she put so much of her her own heart, soul, and emotion into this character. Uh, and yeah, just never believe in anything. Never think you can be a hero because WWE will They'll not like allow it. Correct. Um, <laughs> we mentioned Edge and Rollins. I think it's probably a good thing for us to talk about that match because a from the Brood entrance, which was like nostalgic oh, trips, my God. just that so was good. The feels it was the feels. The, I heard that music oh, when was... he come up with the the glasses, and I was just like, oh my god! Like that's just everything to me. The actual match itself, what a masterpiece of a match. I can pretty much speak for both of us when I say easily the match of the night. Beyond Without far, like, question. Not even debatable. I'm not going to say like, oh, this, yeah, there are other good matches. Nothing was on those level. Edge is so fucking good at what he does. And Seth Rollins is so fucking good at what he does. Um, Mm -hmm. my God, my heart just went, Oh, when he did a glam slam and everything, I thought that was such a nice little touch by edge. I'm like, Oh, look at that. And he did it well. I was like, good for you edge. Um, but but Rollins is so good. Everything just, it was just like, it was like slow in the beginning. And then it just built to this beautiful crescent. Like it was just beautiful. The tap out finish. Like was, I was like, yeah, this is awesome. Like everything about that match made me go. Man, I'd love for them to tango again because it was just so fantastic. Yeah, and this was the epitome of a greatest hits wrestling match. They brought everything from their uh, their long careers and threw all those little Easter eggs in for, for uh, everyone to enjoy. You probably didn't catch them all. Uh, yep. We probably didn't catch them all, okay. but they were there. They were definitely there. You pulling out moves like the uh, the education and the educator. Oh my god, it was it was the amazing. Uh, the, the, the yeah. Downward the, spiral. He was doing them. I was like. That was his original finish. I'm like, oh my god! It 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 was it was what that match needed to be. Mm-hmm. These are arguably two of the two of the better wrestlers, actual pure wrestlers mm-hmm. in the company, and they they absolutely set the world on fire. It was brilliant, such a great match, and I'm I'm happy to admit I got the prediction wrong. I thought uh, it meant more for for Seth to win, but. Yeah, I, I was popping like a child once I saw uh, Edge get that, that that tap out. It was brilliant. Yeah, so, so, so good. Um, Another thing that I found quite brilliant was uh, Will Gage got involved and Bobby Lashley certainly said, fuck off, kid. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's interesting. Uh, uh, this is a word that I'll use for a couple of things. A bold move. Um, But, I mean, you know, um. Goldberg didn't win, so that's good. Mm. No, I mean, hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> Goldberg didn't win. Dot dot dot. Yeah, because we got a Saudi Arabia show coming up, and I think this well, might we, continue. Yeah, we 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 spoke about how he has a couple matches left on his contract, and we we, we were trying to work out how he um, he uses those matches. He's definitely winning the title. There's absolutely <laughs> no doubt. He's with Saudi Arabia and winning that title. But at least in, on the show on US soil with 45,000 or 51,000, if you believe uh, WWE uh, in attendance, we didn't get to see a Goldberg squash match. Um, we saw a squash match. That was a little bit earlier in the show, but Go- uh, Bobby Lashley just absolutely wailing on old man Goldberg. And then when, when Gage Bird came in to try and stop him <laughs> and just got beat the shit out of it, was brilliant. I mean, so I'm not, I am not condoning beating up kids me either. at all. Me but either. You stick your nose in Bobby Lashley's business, you're getting He didn't whooping. know. He didn't know that he – there was no way that he could tell that it was Gage that jumped on his back. So he was just mm-hmm. defending himself. I am not condoning beating up a child. Not at all. But the boy looks older than me. So let's just <laughs> – let's just call that – out for that what it is. Like, I don't believe that boy is 15. I think that's a different kid and he is 35 years old. So he looks it. So you know, he, um he's going to be a big dude when he gets older. Like he's clearly like has his dad probably 
in the gym with him being like, this is what you got to do to get big. Because all jokes aside, Goldberg is, looks very good for his age. He is in incredible shape for a man of his age. So good on him, I guess. But his little leg got a bit sore. It was Bobby La- oh, wasn't Bobby Lashley getting cheered. I was like, whoa, Bobby Lashley's never got this reaction ever. Um, and... And, and, and that, I think that's why they sent out Gage and they were like, attack him, Bobby. You've got to get that heat back. <laughs> they didn't. They cheered him. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. Beat his ass. Beat I was like, ass. oh, my God. <laughs> we're savage people. Um, But I was I was sitting on my couch like, yeah, do it again. And I was like, oh, man, wait, that kid's 15. I probably should hang low for that one. But it was funny. I'm not going to lie to you. It was funny. Um the amount of memes I saw going round uh, of the of the uh, Michael Jordan uh, image where he says "fuck them kids," Fuck them and they kids. just replaced it with Bobby Lashley's face. It's brilliant. So <laughs> so good. Um, so you know Goldberg didn't walk out as uh the uh, W. Uh, yeah, WWE champion. Uh, Roman Reigns did walk out as the Universal Champion in a very good match with John Cena. A little slow to begin with, and I was like, "Come on, lads, pick up the pace a little here." But it built nicely. It put Roman over big. Put Roman over. Roman is, oh man! Like he, every time you think this dude can't go higher, he just goes higher and higher. And man, I said this yesterday on the show. What I, I believe I said it to you. Roman Reigns is absolutely fantastic at kicking out right at the last little point, 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 point of a second. Like every time you think he's going to, you're like he's not going to kick out this time. He's not going to kick out. Mm-hmm. And then he kicks out and you're like, oh my God. It makes that, you know, your heart does that thing when you're watching a wrestling match and you go, oh man, oh, like, oh, he nearly lost the 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 super attitude adjustment, the attitude adjustment through the uh, the announce table um, by pale old John Cena, by the way. I was like, homeboy's looking white. I was like, damn, mm-hmm. he's got no tan going on. And it like went from his, like his back down. It got wider and wider and wider. And I'm like, damn, I hate to see this boy's butt cheeks right now because that'd be like, Beaming, so they'll be like transparent <laughs> at this point. Um, but yeah, he a, a very good match, and then I mean, Brock Lesnar came out at the end, ponytail, oh, just big too. Farmer Brock, Farmer Brock, baby face Brock to too. S- Isn't that nice? He looked a specimen. He absolutely he looked a, a specimen. Yep. Normally, we're not used to seeing barrel shape Brock Lesnar, where he's yep. got a little bit of a gut going on, uh, and his uh, his muscles are kind of sagging. He looked like he was carved out of granite. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Good for him. Yeah. <laughs> Brock, Brock versus Roman. Uh, we had uh, Paul Heyman cowering in the corner like, no, no. <laughs> oh, this it's is going to be interesting. Th- yeah. And it's also making uh, Roman Reigns look like a huge deal because he's, he's – Every every pay per view is there's a surprise entrance, and it's it seems that the person he's facing is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, and if he's able to to carry this on and and defeat the Beast Incarnate, and then hopefully go on to Mania and and face the Rock, this is this is uh, a title run for the ages for me. I think it's really really an, an important title. Run. Well, we're gonna get to one year um, with uh, Roman Reigns. It's coming up on the thirtieth of August, so that's. What a what a three hundred and sixty five days that man has had just truly out of this world Farty champion yeah Farty champion just as well beating off ev- everybody oh, look at this look want to become want to become famous and fuck off um it's a uh, I love that about it's just I love bots aren't they just the best thing in the world let me ban this thing. fuck off yeah blah, 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 get out of here you little shit um okay so. He, 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 so Brock came out. We got Brock Roman um, coming out. But I think before we move on to TakeOver, we should probably talk about another return that happened. So um, there was questioning surrounding what's going on with Sasha Banks and whether Banks and Belair was going to happen. We got the promo. They announced that Sasha Banks is not able to compete. We don't know the reasons why. We won't get into that. We... We do, but we yeah, we don't want to uh, shit on the parade. I won't. I won't. Um, I won't say my comments on that. But we don't know where the reason why. And then it was announced that Carmella would be uh taking the place and of such a big. And how awkward was that? Though? But I think I mean, it was the, done the, by design. Was it not meant to be yeah, done absolutely. like that? Yeah, I mean, knowing knowing now, looking back, uh, it was absolutely meant to be like that. But Trolling. when we saw, Car- <laughs> yeah, Carmella coming down to the ring and we're like, 
yeah, this is this is not. Me and my good. sister this were like, really me and my sister were like, surely this can't be it. And then like, the, she, as she was getting closer, I'm like, listen, someone like Becky's got to be coming out here. Someone's got to be coming out here because it, it. I don't. No, this is absolutely no disrespect to Carmela at all. I I have nothing bad to say about her, but um, I was like, this 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 isn't right. This is just awkward and uncomfortable. Then we got the Becky return. Um, the yeah. pop was. Woo! My goodness, like, it was a big pop. Becky looked ecstatic to be there. Looks in good shape, too. I was like, this woman had a baby not all that long ago. So she's, she's looking great. Um, then, of course, she beat up Carmella and said, hey, I want you one-on-one, Bel Air. And I was like, okay. Um, and then it was like a forearm, a couple forearms, the rock bottom deal, and one, two, three, sayonara. We got a new SmackDown Women's Champion. Now, I know what you're going to say. You sounds like you're a WWE show. Yes, I understand how it sounds. Didn't make me angry because I kind of like the fact that this kind of gives it more legs than them just wrestling a whatever match and Becky winning. It gives a little bit more legs and say, let's give some emphasis on this and build a story out of this. And eventually they can have their 15 minute classic that they would have or whatever. A lot of people did not like the fact that Bel Air was in that spot. I understand it because you've built Bel Air for a long time since the Rumble. And pretty flawlessly, I will say, and that's something that WWE doesn't do very well sometimes, is building new stars. And it does kind of just turn around and go, well, this is already established. We're going to give you more of this instead of... To be honest, I think Bianca Bel Air is probably WWE's fastest rising star they have in the company. And to just kind of turn around and say, well... Never mind. And I'm not saying she's she's far from ruined. And I think this will end up being a heel turn and we'll get a nice long program with Lynch and and Bel Air. However, I can't say that for certain with WWE things because sometimes they just forget and they just mm-hmm. move along. Um, and I'd hate to see that for Bel Air because she's a damn one in a kind of million talent and they've done a very good job at building her. But regardless, didn't really make me that angry. It was shocking. It was a cool moment especially the actual return itself and then going on Twitter after kind of just deflated it um, for me at least. Um, yeah. I mean, the comparisons I saw was uh, she got coffee. Um And I think it, it's, whilst you can see that but in the, in the, in the cold light of day, it does look like she's been, uh, she's been squashed by the great white hope. And I, I understand that viewpoint. But I think this this subtle differences here. Um, I think Kofi uh, was was kind of like a means to an end. Uh, WWE weren't really looking to push him. Um, it, it looked like he he almost got the Mustafa Ali spot, um, and then they just went went with it because it, it got such a huge reaction. With Bianca Belair, they have legitimately built her to be in this position. So um, it's this isn't like uh, WWE using the, the typical trope of we didn't want this, so we're going to squash it. Um, they they want to be Anka Bella to be a big star, and she she has become a big star. Um, I think the 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 issue is what do you do with with this match? This is matches have to be booked on the fly uh, with uh, with Sasha not being available. Um, what do you do? Do you have a competitive 15-minute match uh, where uh, Becky Lynch wins and then you kind of uh, ruin any uh, potential for another match because she's been beaten in a competitive match? Mm-hmm. Uh, there's there's nowhere else for, for the feud to really go. So you have to make it a shock. Um, am I happy that it happened? No. Could they have booked it uh, a little bit better? Probably. Um, maybe have it in... Uh, uh, keep that uh, Carmella in the mix and have like a three-way uh, and Bianca not being involved in the pin. But it is what it is. Um, Bianca is going to come out of this looking uh, as strong as, as ever. And yet and WWE have still got Becky Lynch at the top of the tree. Uh, who's At the end of this, she's a huge moneymaker. And that's what the business is about. The wrestling is secondary. The the aim is what, what brings in the, the most money. And Becky Lynch, as champion, brings in a hell of a lot of more money than Bianca Belair as champion, unfortunately. Yes. Um, I won't add too much more to it. Um, the only thing else I'll say about SummerSlam, and this will go in line with NXT, and it will segue nicely into there. I said this to you just before we went live, but I don't know. 
something's weird. Something feels very awkward. And sitting there while the show was definitely not bad, it was a little bizarre, very bold. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was some really great matches. I just felt this kind of disconnect. And I'm like, what's going on here? Why am I not feeling what is being generated? Why am I not getting as excited? Even Becky came back and I was like, holy shit, it's Becky Lynch. And then I just felt kind of like, all right, whatever. Like, that's not me. And I don't understand why. Might have just been an off day. Maybe I woke up on the wrong side of the bed. I don't know. But something just felt like disconnected with that. And I think, to be honest we seen CM Punk come back and this isn't a direct result of that, but it was just so there was nothing I would change about that as a fan. (laughs) And there was that feeling. It was so organic. And I feel like with SummerSlam, there was a lot of things instead of feeling organic, I was told it should feel organic. And there's a disconnect there. It's manufactured organic. That wasn't. Mm -hmm. And maybe it was just because that moment, maybe it was just because that moment of punk kind of deflated in a sense of nothing is going to excel that no matter what happens this weekend, I don't think anything can exceed what happened right there. So maybe it was a little bit of expectation on my thing of being like, okay, I just don't think, I think we've seen our peak of what we're going to get with wrestling in these three days with that moment, because it's bigger than any match. It's bigger than anything. That is the biggest news, uh, newsworthy kind of story that you're going to get out of this weekend. So maybe it's a little bit of column A, column B, column C. I don't know. Um, but just, uh, yeah, there was this, this feeling of like being told that I should feel this way and actually feeling that way. I don't yeah, recall they're, they're... that punk moment being told I should feel that way. Does that make sense? No, it absolutely does make sense. Um, uh, and I think a lot of it as well is is because you prepared yourself for Punk coming back. Uh, the True. Whilst they didn't actually come out and say Punk is definitely coming back, there were enough kind of like uh, nods to it that you, you knew. You knew they were like, Punk's back. not com- They didn't say Punk's not coming back, but they didn't say Punk is coming back, but they went, Punk's coming back. You know, like, we got we, you. We, yeah. 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 Um, so it was very, very organic, like I said. Um, and I think there was a, a massive kind of... Uh, emotional overload uh, with, with Punk. I mean, I, I said the honest is uh, stream. I wasn't a huge Punk fan, uh, but I get the emotion. I felt the, I felt a lot of that emotion. It, it was a brilliant moment. And it, you can, you kind of come crashing down. And then when WWE uh, try and emulate that with, uh, with, uh, with the return of Becca and with the return of Brock, it does feel forced. It, re- it really did feel forced. And I I, uh, I do believe there was a little bit of scrambling uh, backstage, uh, maybe not so much in, in doing actual deals with these two to, to come back at, at, some, at some time. I think they were already perhaps in the bag. I think, uh, yeah, I, think- I don't think they were like a, a um, what's the word, like a result of punk. I, I think, well, Becky obviously had a shirt. That must have been planned. Like Banks must have been out days ago and they've gone, okay, let's get mm-hmm. Becky in here in her place and we're going to do this. Brock, who knows? But um, I don't think they were a d- direct result or what's the, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a, a like a yeah, counter, counter programming. Yeah, counter yeah. programming. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, one th- more thing before we move on to NXT that I want to mention. I don't owe you $1,000 because Eva Marie did not do a 6.30 corkscrew moonsault <laughs> splash. She, in fact, instead uh, got DDT'd and lost. But she did slap Lily. And she slapped she Alexa Bliss. And she, she, she slapped, slapped the, like, the piss out of Lily. <laughs> Lily. That was brilliant. She, like, my sister was like, sitting there. My sister was like, <laughs> she was like, um, she goes, oh my God, Josh, I just had this thought. I'm like, what? She goes, what would happen if the doll just fell off of the turnbuckle? And I'm like, oh wow, that would just ruin a lot of <laughs> everything, wouldn't it? If she just, just <laughs> fell. Um, but yeah, she slapped the piss out of her. Will you admit at least this? What Eva Marie... And Alexa Bliss didn't have a lot of time. I believe the match probably went about four minutes, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not saying that Eva Marie is a five-star wrestler, but I did notice a slight improvement, especially in her selling. I was like, okay, you've at least attempted to get better. And that's not saying much because Eva Marie has never been a classic wrestler, but I just noticed her selling. I was like, okay, yeah. you're, you're a little better. Uh, and we also got... What the 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 wrestling community has clamoured for since Avery's debut, 
we got the fracturing between her and Dewdrop. Mm. Uh, are we getting Papa back? Please, I think please, we're eventually God. that moment when yeah. she actually does. There's obviously like bickering and all this kind of stuff. I and, believe in you. Yeah, it was good. I they they play you. their roles very well. Yeah. I will I will say that Dewdrop plays a very good role and Eva plays a good role as well because we all hate her and we want. Mm-hmm. Piper, Dewdrop, whatever the fuck you want to call her, to just obliver. We just wanted to run through Eva Marie, and that's going to happen eventually. But the way at the mm-hmm. end of that match kind of went down, and she went, the loser of the match is Eva Marie, and Eva was like losing her mind. She put on her her uh, robe, and off she went. But um, yeah, uh, yeah. I just wanted to just bring up the fact that. Eva beat the piss out of Lily, and it was funny. Um, <laughs> but yes, NXT Takeover Thirty Six is happening in what mere twelve yes. hours, uh, less than twelve hours oh, to go. Yes. Oh man, prepare yourselves, everybody. Prepare yourself for this, Mags, because we got a lot to talk about when it comes to NXT Takeover Thirty Six. Um, and NXT in general. Yes, there's a lot of rumors going around with NXT that maybe we're in for some changes. Um, maybe we're in for a different aesthetic of NXT, even down to the way it's filmed, the way the lighting is, the actual PC itself, uh, the Capital Wrestling Center, I guess you could call it. Um, all just changing, which is uh, worrying, I guess you could say, because that's what makes NXT, what it adds to NXT, I shouldn't say it makes NXT, but it adds to the NXT feel of being the WWE's way of at least entertaining the smaller portion of the audience that is, quote-unquote, wrestling fans. That's what NXT has always been, for a, at least from the moment it went to full sale and then into the Capital Wrestling Center, all that kind of stuff. Um, so to take that away from us, is a, it feels like a bit of a slap in the face to me, at least. Um, I'll just speak for myself, but I'm very concerned um, one of the main reasons I'm concerned about NXT changes is that what does that mean for my beloved women of NXT? Because they're the, my favorite thing in wrestling. Does that change? I know statistically, when you look at NXT call-ups to the main roster, you have a higher succession rate of women working on the main roster than men. So mm-hmm. hopefully that means we don't need to touch that. But if the NXT product is changing... I would assume they would change as well, which sucks. But anyway, um, there is a lot to cover here on NXT TakeOver 36. Mags, I always just kind of go in an order of of matches, but what do you want to talk about first? I'm giving the ball to you to see what you want to talk about first when it comes to NXT TakeOver 36 or or just the product in general. Go for it. Okay. Well, I mean, I I have got some thoughts on on the product and I think – when you hear about the power struggle that seems to be happening in NXT between Triple H, um, Vince, John Laurinaitis, uh, Nick Khan, the whole issue of, of uh, pushing NXT into this imaginary war uh, with AEW and then with uh, AEW uh, beating it hands down week after week, I think we kind of stepped away uh, from the original kind of point of NXT, which was to create wrestlers and prepare them for the main roster. I think over the last few years, NXT has become uh, its own entity where these wrestlers aren't being prepared for main roster. These wrestlers are being prepared for NXT. Um, and we, we we were legitimately, even though we were, we were never really told it officially, this became a third brand. Uh, whenever wrestlers went to uh, the main roster from NXT, they were almost kind of treated like newcomers. There was no kind of build to these wrestlers anymore. Uh, uh, the whole point of NXT was that these wrestlers would always eventually move on. We, we, we ended up seeing more and more wrestlers saying, I want to stay in NXT. I do not want to go to the main roster. Johnny Gagano came out and said it. Uh, Tommaso Ciampa said he would rather retire than go up to main roster. So I think um, that kind of forced the hand of WWE into uh, pushing this as a third brand rather than um, rather than um, uh, it, it, rather than a, a de- developmental. Which then means if this is a third brand, it has to start making money. 
um, because it, it's otherwise it, it's 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 becoming like a, a, a vacuous pit where money's being thrown into it and we're not getting that that kind of payback out, which puts it in the eyes then of Nick Khan and his uh, and his uh, cost cost benefit analysis uh, scenario. And unfortunately, we saw the brunt of that with a lot of the the releases, some uh, some really kind of shocking ones. I mean, Bobby Fish, uh, Bronson Reed, wrestlers who. Who you would never expected of, of to be to be caught. I mean, there were wrestlers who were wrestling that night on on shows, and they they were caught. It was uh yeah, it was quite jarring. So, I I, I am like you. I have, do have worries that we're going to get a change in NXT. Uh, I think a lot of it may be uh journalist talk. A lot of kind of like um, worries uh in terms of uh. Uh, fans thinking that this is the death knell for NXT. I don't think it's it's as dramatic as that. I think we're certainly going to get a kind of a, a reduction in production, maybe kind of stripped back to being bare bones. Um, but I, I certainly don't think we'll see the end of takeovers because critically they get uh, they get rare reviews. And I think um, it's not always about the money. Sometimes you need that kind of a that um, critical appeal. You need to hit as many demographics as possible, and NXT hits though that kind of a indie style wrestling demographic. Yeah. Um, so I, I do think the the talk of NXT uh, kind of going under is a little premature, um, but I, I do have that worry because we can't trust WWE. Uh, we've seen no. it time and time again that that um, that. Um, Things that we think are kind of set in stone uh, are, are, are not really with WWE. I mean, we saw Braun Strowman, for God's sake, is a laugher for the company, and he got cut. So there's always that worry that something is going to to happen to to take our NXT away from us. But they're in contracts with the USA Network. They're in contracts with uh, with Peacock to provide live content. So it, it, it is still going to, to be a thing, whether it's in the same kind of a, um, the, 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 the same vein, um, stand, yeah. Yeah, the same vein or standard that we are getting used to, um, perhaps not. Um, perhaps it'll go back to the early style takeovers where they, they felt a little bit more uh, capsulated, a little smaller, uh, and I don't have a problem. I, I I I don't have a problem with NXT being a smaller product in a sense because it it kind of really when you think about when you think about the earlier days of NXT it was the smaller product and it did look smaller but it added to the appeal of NXT and it's what originally moved me towards NXT was like this doesn't look it's not all about the flashiness and the production side of things. It was a little bit more bare bones, a little bit more scaled back. But if it was almost like WWE's version, like you said, of an indie show, if you will. Um, I mean, still, it's still going to have the WWE set up and it's still going to have the WWE feel and there's still going to be at least traces of WWE in this product when it comes to, because they have a standard level of production, even if it is scaled mm-hmm. back. Um, but it was there and Triple H seems to have a fairly good outlook on talent and outlook, at least from what we can see as fans, he seems to have a fairly decent kind of scope on things, on how things work and letting things breathe. He's a wrestler at the end of the day, he's been through all of this. So, um, he, I, I, I would assume him and his team, Sean Mike, Sean Michaels. I mean, one of the greatest of all time. Triple H, one of the greatest of all time, to be completely honest as well. But just his team of people, William Regal, and all of these great, they have a great outlook on wrestling. So, um, I, no matter what happens, I, I do think you're right in a sense that, um, we're probably speaking way too prematurely. And Tom, what's going on? Um, we're, we're speaking way too soon on things coming to a crashing halt for NXT. Um, a, I don't think it's coming to as much of a halt as we think. And B, if it is, it's not like it's just going to be night and day. It'll be a gradual process that you start to see little bits of like, I can see what's going on here. But that being said, there certainly is still changes coming to how we view NXT, even just even if it just means on an aesthetic point of view, it's going to look yeah. slightly different. We we've pretty much been told that at this stage, so it's going to be interesting. However, Takeover still looks pretty damn solid, pretty damn stacked. The the five matches on the main card, you've got one match on the on the kickoff 
um, Trey Baxton, <laughs> which I when, who can... when they announced that that uh, kickoff match, I'm like, yikes! Trey Baxton's been fed to to Ridge Holland. Jesus Christ, that is going to be a huge squash match. Uh, but yeah, the the rest of the card looks pretty stacked. We won't even we won't even bother with Trey and Ridge because there's nothing really really to say. And Ridge Holland is just he's he's on the up on that one. Um, he's on the mm-hmm. up. Um, you know what? Let's let's start off. Let's let's start off hot. Let's start off with the NXT Championship. Why don't we? You know what I mean? Why don't we start off with the NXT Championship? Karrion Cross will be defending his NXT Championship against the returning Samoa Joe. He is now a talent within NXT. He is no longer a William Regal's right hand man. He is back to wrestling. We're getting Samoa Joe back in a wrestling ring, which is pretty cool. I will tell you this one. Um, this one is going to be physical. These two are going to, mm-hmm. if we know anything about it's Samoa Joe and, and Karen Cross is exactly that. They will beat the absolute piss out of one another, which is fine by me, especially when you've got everything else that's on the card. I'm like, this is going to be the one where they just beat each other up. And I'm mm-hmm. 100% for it. Um, it would seem the writings on the wall to say this one is pretty easy to select in the sense of Karen Cross is on raw um, it would just be like the easy thing to do. Say, here you go, Samoa Joe, right off into the sunset for NXT with a uh, with a uh, carrying cross, and one goes through the right door and one goes through the left, and that's all said and done. However, sometimes things can be a little convoluted, and sometimes they're like, "We're just going to do this to shock you," and then he will drop it on the NXT episode after or something like that. But um, I I think out of everything here, it's pretty safe to say I think that Samoa Joe. He's going to be the first ever three-time NXT champion. Yeah, and um, just just look at these these two wrestlers and the tra- the trajectories they've had over the past mm. uh, year or so. Samoa Joe was a commentator. Um, it looked like his wrestling career was done and dusted. I mean, we saw the guy in a see-through poncho <laughs> at WrestleMania, looking so depressed. And on the other side of the coin, we had a. Uh, Carrying Cross coming into uh, the NXT with a lot of heart, mm-hmm. uh, people really kind of uh, loving his work on on the uh, the Indies and like that. Kind of in the same kind of vein of, as Samoa Joe, really kind of smash mouth, uh, just physical wrestling, uh, and he gets elevated straight to the title picture, picks up a, an injury, but then he's quickly put back in the, in the title picture, and, and then everybody kind of just lost it with him and he he didn't he didn't appeal to the fans anymore whereas when Joe came back everybody was clamoring for Joe to be back in the in the ring we heard the rumors of him signing with NXT um and as soon as uh, he became uh, the right man we knew that we were getting proper Joe back uh, he was uh, not allowed to touch people unless he was provoked uh, and then it's built to this um and now we're going to see Samoa Joe as NXT champion again, and we're going to see Karrion Cross losing to Humberto Carrillo on main event. Uh, it's just a, a real kind of a twist in the tail for both wrestlers. Uh, but yeah, I agree with you. I think Karrion Cross is, I think he's going to be a big deal on Raw. Um, uh, the issue with, with Jeff Hardy, uh, notwithstanding, I thought that that was some pretty um, wonky booking, uh, but I can kind of see the point. You don't want a wrestler coming in um, and and starting this whole kind of a unbeatable thing. WWE likes to break people down and then build them back up. I suppose. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we we see Karrion Cross go off into the sunset, and we uh, we get Joe as champion. And laugh la- that laughs good. That's good. Mm. I like Joe as uh, NXT champion. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Fire giggles. Hello there, uh, my friend over in a. Uh... Canberra in here in Australia. I want to say, I want to say Canberra. I always get it wrong. I'm like, am she in Canberra? But yes, hello. Ho- hope you are well. Um, it's, um, yeah, that it'll be very physical though, which is fun, 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 fun. Um, something else that's been very fun in NXT has been LA Knight and Cameron Grimes. Ted DiBiase, of course, <laughs> being involved, million dollar championship being involved. We've got butlers. We've got everything going on. These, these two guys, or these three really with Ted DiBiase involved, play of each other very, very well. Like, very well. Like, it's, it's a the lot of... Yes, have been brilliant. Just so good. have been hilarious. So good and just so fun just to kind of um, see. I did get it right, Canberra. See? I did get it right. Um, yeah, to the moon. I, I agree, Steph. Um, but, yeah, it's, 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 been, it's been fun to kind of watch this story unfold. And it's just been... This match, 
is going to be different from the NXT title match because it's so heavily driven on story. But also, these two actually do mesh really freaking well. We've seen their ladder match. They had another match. Didn't they had they've had two, didn't they? They had a ladder match and then they had something else, didn't they? Yeah, they had the way you had to be a book. Oh right, well, that was that, that was the that was, was that the ladder match. That was the ladder match. That's where yeah, they, they, had had the, a... they had the original one for the for the towel, uh, and then they had the, the no. That was the ladder match. One. The title was the ring, but maybe they've that had was more in the than one match. They've definitely they've had, had more than, than one. one. Yeah. Fuck, I don't know. Yeah, Whatever. Ellie now punched um, Teddy Rossi clean in the face once he gave him the towel. Yeah, and that was after the ladder match. Yeah. And then they had the the you oh, have to be that, the, the, match. that was just like a standard match, wasn't it? That wasn't a gimmick, mm-hmm. was it? Maybe no. It's just you. They've had was, two matches. They've this had two the matches. Match. This is the third. This is the rubber match. This is the third. But um, they they mesh really well together, and it's a lot of fun. It'd be interesting because if Cameron Grimes wins, he's the million dollar champion, correct? But if yes. Cameron Grimes loses, then. Ted DiBiase becomes LA Knight's Virgil. butler. Yeah. He becomes Virgil. Yeah. And every single part of me in my head says, okay, Cameron Grimes will win this. He'll do this for the honor of the, the million dollar championship of Ted DiBiase. And he'll rule over the, the evil LA Knight. But my heart for some reason says, I want to see Ted DiBiase as a butler. Cause I think that'd be funny. And LA Knight's great, by the way, love LA Knight. He's great, and I just think the, the 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 vignettes they could do with that, that the promo stuff they could do that would be funny. So I want to see LA Knight win. <laughs> that would be great. I think Ted maybe a little bit too old to, to be acting like like a butler, uh, but it would be cool for me. the The issue in, in this match is. Out of everybody on NXT's roster, uh, even Karrion Cross included, I think LA Knight is the most main roster style of wrestler. Too old. Um, <laughs> and short. Uh, Too old. But he's, short. Got, he, he's great on the mark. Uh, his his uh, wrestling style is certainly something that could translate well to, to Raw, SmackDown. So Main event. I feel... <laughs> <laughs> Two or five laugh, uh, <laughs> uh, but I, I feel that we're going to have to have a, a happy ending to this. We've uh, we've seen uh, Cameron Grimes be a bum and then be rich on on doggy coin, uh, and then his, his all aim was to be this million dollar champion. And we've we've had the the speech from Ted DiBiase. I believe in you. Go and dream, believe, achieve. You're my mm. guy. Uh, yeah, and I think we get that. I think we get a, a, a happy ending to this. Uh, LA now going to main roster, and we get a million dollar uh, champion, Cameron Grimes, and then I think the belt just kind of fades away. Again. Which is fine. It's been cool for this. Yeah, it's Too been expensive. cool for this story. It's a million dollars. Yeah. You can't afford that down in NXT. Um, they'll be giving out ten dollar contracts soon. Hey, you want to wrestle for ten bucks tonight? <laughs> Great. Um, but yeah. Um, It'll be a fun match, to be honest. Like I said, they yeah. mesh really well. But I do honestly think that Cameron Grimes will win. I don't think LA Knight will win. Um, but I just think it would be funny just to see it if it happened. But um, a lot of fun. I think Cam- Cameron Grimes is taking that NXT title, uh, that uh, million-dollar title, to the moon. There you go. You got there. Um, I'm going to let you take the leads for this one because I'm not in the UK. So therefore I have no attachment to the NXT UK championship. So you, oh, you want to, you want to wow. hype up what we've got going for the NXT UK title? Like it matters, you know? <laughs> oh, wow. You salty, salty, <laughs> salty bit. This is a rematch from arguably one of the, the greatest best matches my God. in the last decade. It was so damn good. Uh, Volta always brings uh, big matches, and Ilya Dragunov has re- really stepped up to the plate. Uh, I have some real concerns about this match, This match, though. Not particularly the in-ring stuff. I think the in-ring stuff uh, on a bigger stage, I think they are going to want to uh, bring it uh, and really kind of outshine what they, they did uh, a couple of years ago. My issue is the timing. So... Uh, Volta has been championed for over 800 days. Um, By the way, before we go on, 
How fucking impressive is that? In this day and age, 800 mm-hmm. days. 800 days as a world champion. That it's, is it's, insane. Because it's, it's, it's a card of levels of, of, yeah. of, of Ren. It's absolutely amazing. But anyway, but go my on. Issue, yeah, my issue is it's getting very close to the, the end of his contract. Uh, he, uh, the rumours was he signed a three-year deal. This this match uh, will bring him very close to the end of that three year. He's always had a, a an issue where he didn't want to come to to the US. That's why he was put in NXT UK. But the views aren't there to um, to warrant a star on the level of of, of Volta. It's as simple as that. So uh, I think WWE have really made strides to kind of bring him over to uh, NXT um, uh, Black and Gold, and. I hope they've worked. I hope they've convinced him that uh, you are bigger than this. I'd love to see him actually go on to main roster. I think he, him and Imperium will be a really good force on main, main roster and kind of really refreshing that. But my concern is he hasn't signed a new deal and this is the kind of a, the last hurrah of, of, of Volta. Um, if, it, if it is and he goes out on a bang and we get uh, Ilya Dragunov as champion, which I think if... Uh, that's going to happen anyway, whether Volta signed a new deal or not. I think it's time uh, to see uh, a new champion in, in uh, NXT UK. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Ilya will be made will be a made man because of I this. Mean, and this is what this is what a title reign should be. Uh, if you're yes. going to have a long title reign, it should elevate the person who finally beats you. Uh, and Ilya will certainly be elevated. I mean, we've seen him on NXT over the last few weeks, and he has been just superb to watch. Uh, so yeah. Well, to be Ilya- fair, outside of this, the, the the this said match, I have never watched one of his matches outside of this Walter match because I everyone was saying I don't watch. This isn't a knock on NXT UK. This is just simply a me thing. I think it's for a lot of us. There's a lot of wrestling. It's just not mm-hmm. one of the programs that I watch on a weekly basis. Maybe I should because I do. Everyone that watches NXT UK tells me it's probably the best program of the week. Like on a consistent mm-hmm. basis, it's really good. Um, but I've obviously watched that match because I think anyone that's ever watched professional wrestling is doing themselves a disservice if they don't watch that match. It's objectively one of the best things I've ever watched. Like mm-hmm. this it's, isn't a subjective so matter. This is a good. this is, is exceeds what your personal preference in wrestling is. It's a wrestling match for a wrestling fan. There's no other way to describe it. A casual fan will like this. A, a hardcore fan will like this. If you're a fan of fucking, I don't know, light tubes and everything, you'll still appreciate how great of a professional wrestling match that that is. Um, I'm with you in the sense of like, I don't, I think, I, I honestly don't think you can exceed what they did there. I don't, I don't think it's possible because it will automatically be a step down because it's already going to be compared to that. It's a hard spot to be in. I'd hate to be those yeah. two with that kind of pressure riding on you. However, that being said, that doesn't ne- a step down from what we've seen between the, in that match is like what it's still one of the best matches you'll ever see. So yeah. um, I don't think we have a problem there. Um, I, I am glad that it's on a takeover with five other matches on the card. It'll certainly get the time and, and, and attention that it rightfully needs and deserves. Because if you watch that match, it's not like it's balls to the wall, fast paced from the moment you say go. It's a beautiful symphony of ebbs and flows. And it's mm-hmm. just so fantastically done, that match. It isn't, it's an, it's expertly level i i can't watch that match enough and just like i find something new in it every time i watch it it's just a a fantastic match so um i do think that like you said it is time for it to be kind of passed on i think 800 days or whatever the official number is for for walter is is up um and man oh man in, in the modern era of wrestling in general it's an impre like well, I can't say it more. It's more than impressive. It's it's just mm-hmm. it's it's uh, there's no words that can really describe what he has done for that championship. And Dragonoff can take that and 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 see what he can do with it. Um, and yeah, it I mean just, the, the the title for me was was prestigious before Walt even got oh, hold yeah, of it. No, no, yes, of, yeah, because of the length of reigns of uh, of uh, Pete Dunne and Tyler Bate. They're really kind of a uh, uh, medic. 
it, it seems special. And then just adding Walter to that has, has really took it up a notch. And this, this for me, uh, it feels a prestigious title. So mm-hmm. it really will mean a, a hell of a lot uh, to to be raising the 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 level of Ilya and make him uh, really kind of look like a, a genuine champion. Uh, I do think it's time for for Volta to to drop the towel. I hope it's because he's he's more open to coming to the US. I'd love to see him uh, um, on NXT or even on Raw or SmackDown. Um, but yeah, I think it, it's time. And this match is going to slap. It's as simple as that. It mm. may not reach the levels of the first one, but, but nothing that's, can. That's a hard. Yeah, that, that's a hard. <laughs> Act two hard, is hard uh, to seek. It's like the yeah. sequel of a, a fantastic movie. It can be great, mm. but it just probably won't be as good as the original, but, um, it'll it, still be fun. It'll still be a freaking great piece of work. So, um, before we talk about the, the last two matches, I want to touch on some other things on NXT that isn't actually taking place on takeover, but is getting a lot of time on NXT. Cause as you know, mags, and as everyone that follows me on Twitter knows, I love NXT and it's something that I watch and genuinely look forward to every week. I think that's why I'm so attached to this of, of it changing is because I love what it's. I love the way it flows. It's just my wrestling show. Exactly what I like. It flows exactly how I want it to. It's just perfect to me. So, but anyway, a um, few things I want to touch on. First thing is I want to touch on Hero. Damn, damn, damn. Their stuff with um, uh, Legado. Legado del Fantasma is just doing. I wish this was on Takeover because it's been some of the better TV um that's been produced from NXT um. And I love that B-Fab carries around a bat and just smacks dudes with it. I'm like, fuck yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> she doesn't back down. Like, that's cool. They're just a tight – and they've kind of just – they've just organically became a baby face group because it's hard to hate <laughs> Hit Row. Um, but, man, oh man, they're, they're a lot of fun. Um, anything you want to touch on with Hit Row quickly or yeah, with Gardo yeah, as well? Um, I- I remember when um, uh, Shane Strickland was brought into NXT and a lot of uh, my uh, Twitter friends were, they were hating it uh, because he was, he was one of those kind of real indie darlings. Um, and they, I think they, they, they did the typical kind of NXT style where they'll bring a wrestler in and break them down like they did with uh, Damian Priest, like they did with uh, Keith Lee, uh, and then really build them back up. But for, for me, uh, Swerve's build-up was was really slow. He felt like he was uh, languishing uh, in the in the mid card. I mean, we, he had all that uh, um, that that uh, that mini feud. Uh, with oh, I can't even remember the guy's name, but he was the NXT uh, North American champion for about ten minutes. And the oh, belt uh, 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 Leon Ruff. You talking about Leon Ruff? Leon Ruff, exactly. Yeah, yeah. He had that whole mini feud there, and I thought this feels like a waste. And then they landed with Hit Row. And my God, what a! It's it's brilliant. It touches on um, on modern kind of uh, culture. The 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 people that they brought in top dollar is just it's it's such a great little faction. Uh, I absolutely love it, and and the the feud that they're having with uh, Legado has been so good. I mean, they, they're having a feud over a grill and a mask. It makes no sense, but it, it absolutely doesn't matter, works. does it? It just it and, just it just yo sorry, go on. No, I was just going to say that uh, it really elevated um, Swerve to be what. We all hoped he would be when he mm-hmm. came into NXT, and that's a uh, um, a, a championship level uh, competitor. And I, I don't think this is even the 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 tip of the iceberg for Hit Raw. I think the, this could be essentially the new uh, undisputed era. Yeah, in a sense, it really can be. Um, another thing that I'd like to touch on is Index. It's finally happened. They're finally together. Yeah. They're getting married. We're going to have an Index wedding coming up soon. And and Indy, what a beautiful proposal. Beth Phoenix was involved because she's a she ships Index real hard. Um, Candice LeRae, congratulations to Candice and Johnny too, mm-hmm. having a little a little wrestling. I mean, that thing's probably come, going to come out doing cross faces and, and all kinds of stuff. But um, <laughs> it's going to be a very – I mean, when you've got parents that are two of – subjectively two of the best in the entire world in Candice LeRae and Johnny Gargano, you're going to have a pretty good, pretty good kid, but, but Indy and, 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 and Dexter are finally together and man, oh man, they had that mixed tag this past week on NXT and it was just, they just 
flow together so nicely. I'm like, this is just, I'm just going to ride this for as long as we possibly can until it becomes stale because it will be, it's one of those things we understand it has, it, it doesn't have a long length of time where this is going to feel as, as good as it does right no. now, but it just, let's just enjoy it. I'm not thinking about the other side of things. It's a lot of fun. I ship index hard. That wedding is going to be fucking bonkers. It's going to be ridiculous. Yes. And I'm here for it. Absolutely, yeah, same. Um, I've, I've. This has been a, um, a, a love story for the ages, uh, but I think what's tipped it over the edge for me and made it one of the best kind of a uh, uh, love angles. Because we see love angles a lot in wrestling. Yeah. It's a very kind of overused trope. But what's tipped me over is the way that Johnny and uh, and Candice have. have have really tried to mother uh, Index. I mean, over the, the, I think it was uh, this last week when uh, uh, Indy was talking about their date with uh, <laughs> with um, uh, <laughs> with Dexter, who I think is an amazing character. Um, it, to to get that much emotion out of so little is superb, and what a great wrestler he is. But when uh, uh, Indy was describing a date, and he's like, oh yeah, he, he bought me flowers, and Johnny's like, no, no, that's horrible, and we went for a meal. No, not doing that. And then we went. Indoor skydiving. Well, that's actually pretty cool. Yeah. And just the little things like that. Uh, Johnny is so damn good. And then you've got the poster in the background of uh, um, where is Austin Theory is missing the stuff like that. It's, it's it's been so well done from everybody involved. And yeah, I, I love Index. Uh, I wasn't a hugely um, a, a big fan of Indy Hartwell, the wrestler. Um, she just didn't really speak to me, but I think she's really drawn into this role. And yeah, I, I stand Index now. Now, you know, this is going to sound like a compliment when this comes from my mouth, but Indy reminds me so much of, of Billy Kay, of, of, Jess, of Jessica McKay. She is... She gives me the stay. She has that same kind of dry humor. It's a very Australian yeah. kind of humor. It's a very British kind of humor as well. Very dry, subtle humor that not everybody gets. But I'm like, you are like every single friend of mine. You're that kind of person, Indian. And Billy, she, they are very similar in that kind of their delivery of comedy. And that's my, like, you know, that's my cup of tea. And it helps mm-hmm. that she's Australian. I get it too. There is a little bit of bias too, but just that that's my brand of humor. That's what I find that like makes me cry laugh, that kind of humor. Cause it's not ha ha funny. It's like stuff. You'll go, wait a minute. You're like, it's, it, there's a level of silliness to it. There's a level of self deprecating humor to it. There's just a lot of fun. Um, I think India's has come into her own. I think the way was the absolute best thing that ever happened to mm-hmm. both her and Austin theory. Cause I didn't know yeah. Austin theory could do comedy like he did. Cause he's just a big dumb goober. He's missing at the moment. Cause he's all doing other stuff in on the main roster. And I think he's on his way maybe onto the main roster, but it's funny how they're playing off of it. And they, you see the social media post. The way is a short lived thing but a very impactful thing. And I think we'll look back on it like it's been around for, we'll talk about it in like five years and go, Oh, remember the way they were so great. And then look at it on paper. Be like, they were together for like five months, like a, like a yeah. cup of tea. So, um, it, it's, it's really, really cool. I agree, Steph. I wish Indy and Billy could have been in the same room at some point and just been on screen together. But unfortunately, yeah, kind of like the Spider-Man meme where they pointed each other and go, hey, you, you, <laughs> that you, would have you. Been brilliant. But I yeah. think unfortunately for Indy Hartwell is that the moment she crosses over to Raw Smackdown, nobody's going to understand what to do with it. Nobody's going to understand her brand of humor. And it'll end up just like the Iconics, which by the way, I have not really, I've said this on stream, but I, I haven't really got a chance to say it in, in a casual conversation like this. The fact that you fuck up something like that, that is so easy to book. They just, mm-hmm. just let them, let them be themselves. Let them be comedy. I think WWE don't know what to do with funny women. And I'm just saying it as a pure sexist thing because it is kind of sexist. When you think about it, they don't know what to do with it because they've never had it before. So they're like, well, we don't know, split them up. Mm -hmm. And I just, but that's a topic for another day. I think as soon as Indy crosses over though, your, your, your chances for success are pretty slim and that's no knock on Indy Hartwell. Um, that is just simply, they don't know what to do with that kind of stuff. And I don't think they don't, they don't know what to do when it's, they have someone that speaks differently than American. Plans to be. Mm-hmm. 
Unfortunately, I agree. Um, I don't think the crossover is is there. This is very a, a very insular uh, kind of storyline. Um, and if she goes to main roster, they, it won't even be mentioned. So she'll be coming in, kind of like how uh, Papa Niven was brought in. Like, who is this? Where is she coming yeah, from? Yeah, doesn't that piss you she, off? She was in NXT UK fucking You're years. Telling You're telling me not to watch your product. You're telling me not to watch what you're producing. That's all it tells me. Correct. So... Mm-hmm. When you complain that NXT doesn't do good ratings or NXT wasn't viable against AEW, which is nothing would be viable against AEW at the moment, A, because they have a hot product, and B, because it's the shiny new toy. Yeah. So therefore, you're doomed yeah. from the start. Um, you're just telling me, but you're telling me on your main show that you don't want me to pay attention to that stuff, so I'm not going to waste my time. You're telling me that. Yeah, That's all I it mean, does. The, WWE try and, 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 uh, and sell that this is a universe. And if you compare it to other universes, like the Marvel Cinematic Universe, everything is intertwined. You may not uh, see every character on every single film, but there is a a continuity. Mm -hmm. And there isn't one in the WWE Universe. Everything is its own, and it stays in its own lane. And if anyone switches over what they did before is totally forgotten. And that's, that's the issue. It should always be intertwined. It should always be mixed. The, it takes two seconds to, to have a mention uh, of what's happening on NXT. And, right. and uh, yeah, it, that's all it takes. If you wanted to build carry and cross, you mentioned on, uh, um, on Raw and SmackDown, my God, Karen Cross is being so dominant. This happened, and um, there's rumors that he may be coming over to 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 run. You get people invested, and instead that you takes bring him thirty over. seconds. You could do that while the man walks yeah. to the ring. You never have to mention Correct. it again. You don't literally have. Yeah. You've said it once, therefore it's on the viewer then to mm-hmm. be. But you're you're not telling us, so therefore, a do drop is the literally the perfect example of that. And we've talked about that on that show or on this show, on these shows before. So we won't go into that anymore, but just very stop shooting me, stop treating me like I'm a stupid bitch because mm-hmm. I might be a bit of a stupid bitch, but I'm not completely a stupid bitch, especially when it comes to professional wrestling. I know what I'm in taking and I know what I'm not. So you're treating me like an idiot. Anyway, something that isn't treating me like an idiot is the NXT women's championship storyline, because We've been talking about it. Every single takeover stream that we've had. When is it going to happen? Who's going to turn on who? And my God, was that turn perfect the way that happened. How it was kind of like Dakota was like, as long as you have me by your side, you will never, ever lose that NXT Women's Championship. So who Mm -hmm. brought you into this world and who's going to take you out, Raquel? That'd be one Dakota Kai. Um, It is interesting I don't know if it's really, we haven't had a lot of room to breathe with it yet, but it is interesting to see Dakota as this, she's the, she's the, she is the heel. And I guess Raquel by proxy is the face, but I guess she falls maybe into a tweener category because she just doesn't like Dakota. Um, I think they're very lucky that they're not in a full size arena because I don't know if the crowd would necessarily give two hoots about Raquel over Dakota. I really do mean that. Um, I think for a lot of us that are fans of NXT have waited for a moment like this for Dakota and been like, she is within uh, an arm's length away from the NXT Women's Championship. And I think it's something that a lot of people have wanted for Dakota Kai since the very moment that she started in NXT. Um, Mm -hmm. So I think they are very safe that they're in the Capital Wrestling Center and not in a arena or wherever they would be for a, for a takeover. Well, a couple years ago now, since we've been in that, but, um, very well done. I love the turn. I thought it was a great moment. I'm very bold that they did it on a tape show because obviously we hear about these spoilers beforehand. It's pretty hard to avoid them. Um, so I knew that was happening, but even still knowing what was happening, I was like, man, this is really done to perfection. And Dakota has had a couple of weeks where she's cut some brilliant promos with, um, leading into this about the reasons why, you know, it's typical, it's nothing new here. This is a pretty simple story, but that's not bad. Um, but just the typical, like I brought you here, I made you who you were. You're nothing without Dakota Kai, you know, flapping her gums as a heel would a very good stuff though. what do you think about the actual turn itself and what it means for both of these women? Yeah. Um, 
I, I have been on the Dakota car heart train for the longest time. I mean, from when she was essentially the Carly Ray of NXT, where she was the 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 happy go lucky leader of Team Kick, then the 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 frat and little girl who was bullied by Shayna Baszler. I thought that that maybe would have been a great time to get her involved in the NXT title picture. Uh, obviously, that didn't happen, and then we get. <laughs> Arguably one of the best turns in uh, in NXT history with the stuff with with Tegan Knox and uh, the whole kind of war games thing, uh, and I thought that that may be the the kind of like the death knell of Dakota Kai, but she has proved that she's great as a babyface, but she's even better as a as a bitchy heel. Yep. Uh, bringing bringing her in to be the the mouthpiece for a very green. Uh, Raquel Gonzalez. Uh, let, let's uh, let's not uh, pretend that Raquel is the perfect wrestler. She's she's still incredibly green. I mean, it wasn't that long ago she was coming out with a with a cowbell. Um, so literally, but, <laughs> like yeah, but, quite but, literally a cowbell. <laughs> yeah, but the the kind of rise of her uh, and she's really learned on the job, and she does look like a, a legitimate um, uh, NXT uh, Women's Champion. This storyline has been super. We knew it was happening from day one. It was just when was it going to happen? Uh, and we, we got the kind of like drip feed of, of uh, Dakota being pushed further and further into the background. Uh, Raquel becoming the star rather than uh, the the kind of muscle to, to uh, mm-hmm. Dakota. And then we saw uh, Raquel getting pops almost uh, the fans cheering them and and that really kind of irritating Dakota car um so we knew the turn was coming I think it, like you said it was done really really well perfectly timed um and yet yeah, to see this match uh, I think it's going to be a great match my issue is one of these is going up to main roster. We've got a, a draft coming up. Um, the core car has been in NXT for what seems like forever. Um, I, might, I, I think we might see her go up without ever holding the NXT uh, women's title, which would be a, a massive shame. Um, I don't think it's quite the time to take the title off uh, Raquel Gonzalez just yet. Uh, it seems that they're kind of positioning Frankie Manier uh, as the next challenger. Um, but yeah, I think, um, do you, looking at it from what you like in wrestling, do you think Frankie and Raquel is something of value? I mean, Frankie Benet or, um, Taya Valkyrie was a huge name, um, outside WWE. So you bring in a talent like that, you have to, uh, you have to push him to the the, the top of the card. Uh, I think Taya is certainly talented enough to get a good match out of uh, out of Raquel, and uh, Raquel is certainly someone who still does need uh, leading in a match. I don't think she's got the the wrestling chops yet to be the the ring general. And by the um, way, I, I I'll I'll happily say this: we're not shitting on Raquel. I think Raquel is oh, great. No, her, she, she's green. Her. It's not a it's yeah, not a bad thing. Her ra- her rise from from cowbell um, uh, uh, Reina Gonzalez mm-hmm. to uh, to this uh, Raquel Gonzalez is is superb. The the short time that she's been in wrestling for her to to really legitimize herself is is a, a really good thing. Yeah, but. It, wrestling is always a, a learning experience and she certainly is learning on the job. And yeah, um, and getting getting in there with Frankie, like you said, um, probably does more benefit. Well, I mean, it doesn't hurt Frankie at all, but I mean, it does more benefit for Raquel to be in there with someone like a, a Frankie Monet, Pia Valkyrie, whatever you want to call her, um, to get to, to, to shake off that greenness, to get more experience and to learn from someone yeah. and being in there with Dakota Kai, being in there with Ember Moon, being in there with Io Shirai, Holy moly! Um, it's a very good list of people. <laughs> it's a, a, if if you needed to be under a learning tree, that is certainly a learning tree to to be under because that's that's elite level wrestling talent. Elite, that you Ooh. can soak up all you soak up all that that um, that knowledge. Mm-hmm. Um, but going back to this match, yep. uh, there's been talk of Raquel going up to main roster. Uh, I don't personally see that because I think sh- they've got people like her already on main roster. You've got Rhea Ripley, you've got Charlotte Flair, uh, who are more horned wrestlers. Um, you've got um, you've, you've got bigger stars, and I think she needs more kind of uh, work in the in the PC, in that kind of smaller uh, group that they have in NXT. Um, 
Whereas Dakota, I think she's primed to go on to, to main roster. I think she's ready. Uh, I would have loved to have seen her have a tight run. If it happens, a quick tight run for me would be absolutely brilliant, just, just so she's got that on her resume. But either way, I think uh, Dakota looks like uh, a main roster star now. Uh, so I fully expect her to lose the match and then go, go off into the sunset. I'm a bit worried about that. I mean, to be fair, is... Becky Lynch was never the NXT Women's Champion, and she's arguably the biggest industry, uh, biggest star in the industry at the moment, or one of. Mm-hmm. So you don't need mm-hmm. the NXT Championship just to just to be over. But I'm a bit worried that Dakota Kai's. You know what? Actually, I will say that Dakota Kai is a character that I don't think will. This is purely how I think the main roster works. I really love Dakota Kai. Big huge fan of Dakota. I think she's wonderful, but she will be a talent that does this on the main roster. Mm-hmm. Doesn't do, do this, th- doesn't do this, but just stays in the middle. Th- Good hand, her, solid. Her, <laughs> she's got. She's certainly got the wrestling style that melds well with everything that yep. uh, the main roster has. She can, she can work with absolutely yep. anybody. Agreed. And I think the one thing that was maybe holding her back was she had this cookie cutter um, um, face persona. Now she's got that that uh, kind of uh, character chops where she can be your face or she can be a heel. Um, I think she's got everything that that you could potentially want to be uh, okay. a top star in in uh on raw or smackdown whether that pans out we've we've seen it not pan out uh but we've also seen wrestlers who maybe uh wouldn't have got to the top of the card actually be at the top um so yeah, one, you, you one could never you could never percent. trust wwe you are right but all of those reasons you just said is exactly why she'll just do this is because she can float with anybody she's not mm-hmm necessarily, and again, this isn't a knock on her. I love Dakota. She's not better than their top talent. She's not worse than their middle talent. She is just simply like this. Zelina Vega is a great person to talk about in that role. She is a woman that I think her style meshes with pretty much anyone. She can work with bigger people. She can work with people the same size as her. She can kind of float around. She's a great promo. I think if given the time, Zelina Vega could be a great baby face. But mm-hmm. she will just do this. She never really does this. And, and and I think that's going to be an issue for a long time with the, 100%. the main roster women's because there is there is kind of like a, a hierarchy there. You've got the four horse women who are always going to be floating around the, the top of the card. You've got the likes of Asuka, Rhea Ripley, who are uh, are always going to be wrestlers who are there or thereabouts. So it is hard to break And then there's like a bunch in the scene. middle, isn't there? There's like a bunch yeah. like your mm-hmm. Mella. Mella is someone that will always float. Naomi. Naomi, someone that will always float. You can use them in the title pitches and it doesn't seem awkward, but the likelihood of them winning, you're like, yeah, you're just the star the person to get whoever's next yeah, Bianca, yeah, the, the, literally Bianca's program in between Bailey and Sasha. Now Becky, I guess, but Sasha was Mella. She was just, it doesn't mm-hmm. hurt Mella to lose, but also it doesn't, it, it's a viable win for Belair, but she just floats. Dakota mm-hmm. will become that person. And that's what my biggest fear is of going up. And again, this isn't a knock on any of those talents. All of the talents I just listed are actually quite good. And I think a lot of them are better than what they're being presented, what they are on television. So um, that's my biggest concern for Dakota Kai coming up or going over, whatever you want to call it. But um, I, I am with you. I don't think Raquel loses the championship here, but I'm certainly not opposed to it. In fact, I'm probably leaning towards my heart is saying, I would just like to see Dakota get a little bit of a run yes. as NXT Women's yes. Champion. But uh, this match ha- uh, has a very interesting layer. Out of everything on the card, I'm like, this match is the most unpredictable in the actual sense of not who wins, but the actual way this match will be laid out. Will it be a fast-paced match? Will it be a Raquel running through Dakota match? Will it be Dakota dominating? Will it be more of a story? There's so many layers to this because of the story it presents. And because it's not the cookie cutter, like the the bigger, stronger is the heel and the, the mm-hmm. underdog. That's an easy story to tell. Then the underdog is the the littler one and they can, you know, do all the things and they just get beat up because the little one is heel and the, the bigger, stronger one is the face. It's a different story to tell. It's very like, you're going to see, I think you're going to see a lot of dirty stuff in the sense of like Dakota will be cheating a lot, finding any way she can mm-hmm. to win. Um, but it is going to be fun. But if I have to put money on it, 
I think it will be Raquel that uh, retains the NXT Women's yeah. Championship. Um, yeah, I agree. Oh, boy. Let's do this for a second because the uh, <sighs> what I think will be the main event. We, we the, need to breathe now because we have got – there is a lot to unpack in this There's match. a lot. There's a lot. Um, so we have got the final the, – the undisputed ending, I think it's being called, or the fi- – what is it? The final – what is it? I don't know what it's being actually coined as. Um, but it's the end uh, – it, when we talk about NXT changing, this is truly the end of an era, no pun intended, in NXT. Um, I think what happens at TakeOver and then going into Tuesday with NXT is going to be two very different lands that we are living in. I mean that in every every way that you think I mean it. Um, holy moly. Adam Cole, Kyle O'Reilly, a two out of three falls match. The first fall is a traditional straight up wrestling match. The second fall <laughs> is a street fight. And if needed, the third fall will be held inside a steel cage. And um, we're going to go to three falls. That's yes. pretty much 99% how all two out of three falls matches go. We get to three falls. And I think there'll be weapons left from the street fight in the ring. So we have like a very hectic style steel cage. Um, I do think so. The traditional wrestling match was chosen by Kyle O'Reilly. Okay. Yeah. And then the street fight was chosen by Adam. And then the last four was chosen by William Regal. I do think that we see like the traditional wrestling match won by, um, by Kyle O'Reilly. Cause he lost the traditional wrestling match in that, in their second match. If that makes any sense. If you, if you know what I mean, like Adam Cole won their second match, which was traditional. Kyle O'Reilly won their first, which was the unsanctioned street fight. So I think the way it goes is that they, do the opposite. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah they yeah. do the opposite this time. And so they each have a win in each gimmick. Then we go into the steel cage. Um, it's very interesting to talk about this because there's a lot more than just the end of a storyline. There's a lot more than just two men fighting in a ring here. There's a lot of um, chatter, I guess you could say around Adam Cole, baby, because there's been a mm-hmm. lot of um, rumor. It's all rumor. We don't know for sure. But that maybe uh, what well, we know that he's on a, an extended agreement with NXT, or maybe a handshake deal, or he's signed on until the basically until takeover. And mm-hmm. then there's been a lot of talks that he's had v- meetings with Vince McMahon to get him to sign a new deal and maybe move on to the main roster. If he did sign said deal, we know that AEW will be lurking. There's a lot of factors there. His friends are there. His his girlfriend is there. Um, so maybe AEW comes into play and maybe a little bit of a, a war in the words of like contracts being offered. We don't know. The only person I think truly knows what's going on is Adam Cole, because I think he's doing, I honestly smart boy. Um, I think he's got probably a lot of money thrown at him right now to be completely honest. Well, the, the rumors are he got uh, offered a million dollar contract uh, downside by Vince, which uh, in the, the the very frugal times that <laughs> WWE are going through, that's huge money. Uh, but I, money. I, I, don't, I don't think for Adam, uh, I don't think it boils down to just money. Uh, I think if he wanted to go for just money, AEW would throw the absolute book. True, in. but uh, money does talk, Mags. Money. No, well, yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not saying it, it's. It's. Uh, he's definitely not considered it. <laughs> I think this is more about where uh, the Adam Cole character and the, the the kind of future of Adam Cole goes. Because it's all well and good taking a million dollars off off Vince and then being absolutely buried on the, the main roster. And, and uh, we all know it's the land of the giants and Vince will have seen five foot five Adam Cole and gone, my God, you're so small. Um, but if he's been given uh, assurances and promises uh, of uh, how his character is going to be looked at on main roster, I can see that being more of a deciding factor. And than not Vince only that, I think a lot of the thing... Kettle. I think a lot of thing for Adam Cole, and this might seem like nothing to someone, is being the ability to be able to stream on Twitch and being able mm-hmm. to do his. Uh, 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 I know he still does. He, I think he has some kind of deal that he's able because he still does stream. But it, that has to come up in your contract negotiations of going, hey, hey, you know what would make me maybe consider staying here more if in my deal it says I'm allowed to do outside adventures, uh, like adventures, like streaming on Twitch, like. Yeah. He makes a lot of money with up, up, down, down. He's a, a massive mm-hmm. part of that. 
you got to look into that kind of stuff when it comes to that. That probably comes into the million dollar kind of deal that he's getting offered is like, okay, you're obviously a property that we have outside of just NXT. You're a name value that we don't want to see go anywhere else. And I don't care what any merch seller, you're a merch seller. I don't care what anyone says. Like when people are like, Oh, they're only offering. So he doesn't go to AW. Well, well, no shit, Sherlock. Of course they yeah. don't want talent. That If they're not releasing talent, I should say, and they're offering people deals, it's someone that they think is a threat if they leave. Yeah, so valuable. that's not silly. Oh, I don't I, see how that's a, a bad it, thing. Yeah, I, I don't think it's even that Adam Cole is a threat if he goes to another company. I think it's he's got so much value to WWE that they know he's – he's profitable and it all comes back down to this uh, cost benefit analysis. Um, it's, there will be a number figure assigned to Adam Cole. And if he is making more for the company, then he's, then they're he's in the green. Him there. They see him is green. Yeah, they the don't green. see him red. Exactly. And that's and, all that uh, they care. I think- WWE care about what they're making at the end of a quarter. And if you're yeah. in that green and you're a talent that's selling merch, that's blah, X, Y, and Z, you're making money on our, because up, up, down, down, and, and everything like that, you're making, you're in the green, we will do anything we can to keep you in the green. Yeah. And we don't want and to I see that what, green go to somewhere else. It's, it's business. Exactly. I don't see how that's, people are like shitting on them from that. I'm like, why? They're just doing their business. And I think uh, one thing that hasn't really been talked about a lot about Adam Cole is he's been abundantly clear that one of his goals in wrestling was always to have a WrestleMania moment. Uh, and as much as uh, AEW is the new shiny shiny and putting out some great stuff, you can't get a WrestleMania moment in AEW. It okay. just doesn't happen. Um, so I think there's still a lot of factors. The, the talk of him going to AEW has kind of died down a little bit. Exactly. Um, it, and that's it, what was, makes it was... It, it was huge uh, when we uh, when we found out about a month ago that he was on this handshake uh, extended agreement. And props to to him as a person. He didn't have to do that. He could have walked. He could have taken the the uh, yeah the, I agree. Uh, the, the the route of just like upping sticks, the Lex Luger style route where his contract's up, I'm off. Uh, but he's always been a stand up guy. He did the same thing with Ring of Honor, I believe. Seems he, he, that, he seems deal. like a genuinely nice human being. Even the way yeah. he talks to people, he, and he's, I watch those, um, like meet and greets that they do, those virtual meet and greets, and he's always just a trooper. Like, he just, he seems mm-hmm. like a stand up guy. So, I, I do agree. Props to him for being like, hey, I'm loyal. You've done great by me. I want to do great by you. I'd like to see this program finish. And if we can work out a new deal in there, we work out a new deal. If not, then at least I've, I've, I've been loyal to you guys and I can walk away maybe helping somebody else or at least ending. What and was a big it. chapter, and that's the that's the that's the the most decided fact of of, uh, of how great a person he is. He, even if he is leaving the company, even if he is going to uh, Raw or SmackDown, he's putting someone over on his way out. Um, he didn't have to do that. His contract was up. He could have walked, took the huge money, but he's he's doing exactly what he did in Ring of Honor, and that's elevating the next person who's going to take his spot, I suppose, in, in the company. And yeah, for, for that, I have, I mean, I've always had a lot of respect for Adam Cole, but that yeah, tips him over for me. It's, uh, yeah. it, it's such a, an amazing thing. But getting to this match, I one more, think One more thing uh, before we talk about the match. I do want to add... That there was an interview with Britt Baker a couple of weeks ago, and she said there was a point that nobody is talking about in this interview. She said they asked her about Adam Cole. It was like a Q&A portion of the show, and they asked her, and she said, hey, it's not my responsibility or my business to talk about his contract deals or whatever, but what I do want to say is that NXT to him is his home, and they've treated him very kindly, and he's doing right by them. So I think it's very important to say that she didn't have to say that, and of course she could just be playing into the whole thing. So it's bigger if he does come over here to the place that she works for. However, it is nice to know that not only is he being treated kindly and he's treating them kindly in return, he seems even coming from his girlfriend who works for the, for the rival company and she could easily just turn around and be like dog shitting it. It seems that he's genuinely happy. And at the end of the day, as a fan, I just want talent wherever they are to be happy and having a good time. And if that doesn't matter where they are. So I just add that in. And I think that kind of speaks to the, the underlying, um, um, attitude in wrestling. We, we as fans see what's, 
posted on on social media we kind of come up to our own conclusions about uh companies hating each other and wrestlers never uh speaking with a com- uh, wrestler from the 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 uh the other side but it, it, it's hard to not believe that these all these guys talk wrestlers from aw are friends with wrestlers from wwe who are friends with wrestlers from nwa who are who are friends with wrestlers from from new japan this is a community underneath just the kind of the tip of the iceberg that we see on social media um so i i can truly believe uh people in aw would be absolutely over the moon if Adam Cole got a million dollar deal from uh, uh, WWE because they want to see one of their own yeah. thrive. The point is you you want to see people in your business do well. Uh, so I, I think the whilst on the on the the outside it looks like it's a war underneath these are people playing the fans to, Could you imagine to get the more money for the wrestlers. You imagine the yeah. conversation when a, Adam Cole goes home and he goes, hey Brit I just got offered a million dollars. Should be like, let's fucking buy a couple houses. Like, what the <laughs> fuck? Like, I don't think there'd be anyone. I don't think, I think people sometimes think like, oh, I bet you she's in his ear going, well, don't take that deal. You got to come work with me. I don't think that's the conversation they're having. I could nearly guarantee that the conversation that'd be happening is like, we're rich. <laughs> Yeah, and then they'll see each other coming home with huge smiles on their faces, <laughs> knowing that they're at the top of their respective companies. Yeah, they they are living the life. They've got two huge fan bases eating out of the palm of their hands. They've got all this kind of like uh, social media build up. These guys are absolutely loving being in the position they're in, and if if that leads to good for them. taking a million dollars, absolutely good for them. Yeah. Brit Br- will gain from that million dollars because her husband uh, is 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 a millionaire. They can it's wipe their butts with with money for a little while if they wanted to. They'll be... take that money to the moon. To the moon. But talking about this match, all everything clouding over it aside. Obviously, this match is going to be very good. It's going to get a lot of time. I think it will rightfully be the main event of the show as it really should be. It'll go to three falls. And I think that it would make, I think with the end, where whatever happens with Adam Cole, whether he stays or whether he goes, his time in NXT is done at TakeOver. I think I can yes. nearly guarantee that. And that doesn't mean that he's leaving the company. It just means that it, it, he, he could it easily show up on Raw or SmackDown. In, um, in terms of his NXT run, it's Adam Cole, bye-bye. And that's that's an end of, and again, all puns intended, I don't give a fuck. It's the end of a, of a brilliant, brilliant, undisputedly great era in NXT because Adam Cole was... The, he did everything. He was he the man in NXT. Yeah. One of the greatest yeah. NXT champions of all time. One of the best runs as NXT champions of all time. The greatest faction in NXT history. One of the greatest factions in wrestling history in the Undisputed Era. Undisputedly mm-hmm. just wonderful, we will wonderful. Talk about, we will talk about... Uh, the Undisputed Era in the same vein as we talk about the NWO and the Shield. Um, I agree. The it, it's just been superb, wonderful. Uh, and just Adam and, and Adam Cole. Proud of. Adam Cole is going to be looked at whether again whether he goes somewhere else or goes to the main roster as one off, one of if not the greatest NXT superstar of all time. And I think Correct. that's undisputably, objectively, <laughs> looking at things. He is statistically one of the best ever, if not the very yes. best. So, mm-hmm. but the match itself will be a lot of fun. We're going to get a very physical match. It's going to be a very time invested match. I think Kyle, a lot of false finishes, a lot of super kicks, a lot of false finishes, all of it that you want out of NXT to signify mm-hmm. the, the end of all of this. And it will be, I think we'll, I can nearly speak for you when I say this, Kyle O'Reilly will be getting his hand raised at the end of this one. Mm-hmm. And Kyle O'Reilly can go on to do, I mean, a Kyle O'Reilly Samoa Joe program. Oh, oh I, got, I got tingles. Yes, please. Kyle O'Reilly mm-hmm. is a talent that can work with nearly anyone and it will be fun. You know how I feel about Kyle O'Reilly's character, but character aside, um, he's I mean, very good. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's, um, his, his new character is kind of like a, a dollar store version Shit. of I think of, the word is orange, of Orange Cassidy. 
This, I think someone saw Orange Cassidy and thought, that's cool. Carl, do you want to dress in denim? Why not? <laughs> and shave your hair like a fucking idiot. Um, I just, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not for it. You know, I'm not, but, but character aside, he's a very good professional wrestler as is Adam Cole. Um, it's going to be very, uh, there's not really much else I can say about it just because we know, we know what we're getting and we know what this match is entailing. And we know that this is the end. This is potentially the last time that these two will wrestle for a long time. and and if the rumors are true about this being kind of the end of NXT takeovers as we know it, what a final hurrah to go out on! I don't think you could have picked uh, a better kind of um, snapshot of what NXT can bring to the wrestling world than than this match. It's going to be everything that that we fell in love with NXT for. It's going to be fast-paced, hard-hitting, uh, just ball-to-the-wall action. Uh, maybe m- more false finishes than we kind of like, but that's that's the NXT way nowadays. Uh, and at the end of it, we'll be taking on a, a long emotional journey uh, and we'll we'll see kind of the, the baton passed on, uh, I suppose, with, uh, with Carl and then... Again, kind of like what's happening uh, in quite a few of these matches. We're going to see somebody ride off into the sunset and be a bigger star than than they've ever been before. So it's uh, if it is the end, what a happy, uh, amazing way to to put a, um, to put a, an end on NXT. Yeah. It makes me so. <laughs> did I really? I really kind of uh, soured the the atmosphere. Then no, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just, it just. In all in all, if this really is the end, it really does suck. Um, <laughs> just for because I'm not ready to let go of NXT the way I see it. I just love. I said it before. I just love the format, even like the the timing of the show. I just really, really do. I I do enjoy it. It's it's what I've been looking for as a wrestling fan for the longest time, and I finally found it. And now it's getting taken away from me. So, um, but regardless, I, I still think we've got a little bit more time to really sink our teeth into NXT before it does gradually make some changes. But um, this is going to be the last takeover that looks like this and the last takeover that has a lot of this talent because a lot of this talent will not be on the next takeover because I think a lot of this talent will be moving on to Raw SmackDown or beyond who, who really knows what's going to happen. The wrestling world is a very interesting place, especially in the last six months or so. It has become a very interesting place where you think that – people are just going to stay where they are and that's not the case anymore. I n- nearly 90% of of the roster of WWE I can now be like I can physically see them somewhere else because it's just a different landscape and the business the business in general is changing and WWE itself is is rapidly massively changing. So mm-hmm. um I don't think in a couple years time, we're going to be talking about WWE the way that we have been, because I think that it's not going to be exactly what it is right now. And I think we're on a bit of a change of what actually is WWE. So uh, we're in a very um, transitional time, I think, and a very hot time for the business too. It's very, very hot and it feels kind of cool to be a wrestling we're, fan again. We're, we're, we're entering another golden era of wrestling, uh, an era that we kind of got in 2016 where wrestling was, was, was cool. It was hot. It was, it was the, the in thing. And we kind of like got a little bit of a subdue with the, the pandemic. Uh, and then it, it's, it's coming back up. Um, now, whether WWE are going to ride that wave or uh, whether the rumors of, of a sale is happening. Uh, and that's what, uh, that's what the company's been pram for who knows but I, I do agree with you that uh in the in the next couple of years we're going to see some uh some uh changes to how wwe and i think presents m- major programming. major change I don't, I don't think just subtle changes i think it's going to be wrestling will not feel and look the same as we are used to on a wwe stage anyway i mean and and that's why AEW is so important because yes they, they are going to be there to mop up those disillusioned uh, NXT and WWE fans if the, the changes that we worry about do come to fruition. At least the wrestlers have somewhere to go. The fans have somewhere to go. Mm-hmm. Um, and and with, with the access that we've got to wrestling, 
if you are not happy with something, there's plenty out there for you to watch. I mean, the likes of Fat TV, the likes of Independent Wrestling TV, uh, AEW, all these huge companies are vying for your for your money, vying for your views, uh, and you will find a wrestling that you enjoy. Um, so it's definitely out there. I think maybe the 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 times of it just being one company, uh, WWE, and everybody else are kind of scratching uh, at the bottom. I think those days may be done. I think we, we're seeing more of a kind of a hierarchy in wrestling. Uh, and it's only good for the for the business because the wrestlers are happy and that comes through in the wrestling. So um, it's 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 a it's it can be a positive. Maybe uh oh, WWE stranglehold of wrestling uh being loosened is a is a, a positive for the business. Absolutely agreed. A thriving business is a good business. So it only helps when one place does really well for so long. And they kind of take a hold of the whole industry. It's it it really oversaturates everything else and just kind of dries everything else out in a mm-hmm. sense. When there's yeah. two, really, when you look at it, not any offense to any other company, but WWE and AEW. WWE still like what people associate wrestling with. They're like, oh, that WWE stuff. I don't know in 10 years time, even five years time, necessarily casual fans will be saying, oh, that's the WWE or AEW stuff. You know what I mean? I think, I think it will grow and it's a good thing because once they're doing good, it will trickle down to the rest of the industry. Mm -hmm. And obviously AEW are more open to working with other promotions than WWE are. And Hey, I'm not knocking whatever works for whatever works. It, it, It is what it is. But, um, the business is changing. I think at the end of the day, we're in a very changing time for the business in negative mm-hmm. in every which way, but loose, you know what I mean? Like it really is where we're living through history. Cause I think in 10, 20 years time, we'll look back on these. Well, people will look back on documentaries. There'll be documentaries about exactly what is happening right now, behind the scenes, on screen, everything. It'll be, it's a very we're, we're entering a boom of wrestling, I think. We're on the cusp yes. of it. Um, so it's it's exciting. But NXT TakeOver in, in general, I think, will be a good show. There's never been in history a bad a, 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 a great way to round up uh, a really cool uh, weekend of wrestling. Yeah. Uh, we've had we've had huge pops. We've had returns. This has been uh, a weekend where there has been something for everybody. A headline-worthy uh, weekend. That's a way you can say it because while we've had great wrestling, it's been definitely not about wrestling. It's been about the moments. Mm-hmm. It's been about the moments and moments are bigger than any match ever. I will always say that moments are yeah. bigger. That's what wrestling is built on. It's not built on what happens inside of, well, inside of a wrestling match. It's built on the moment. You don't talk about Austin and rock at 17 having a phenomenal match. You talk about the moment that Austin aligned with Vince McMahon. Yes. The WrestleMania moment. That's why it's called the, it's not called the, the WrestleMania match. It's the WrestleMania moment. Nobody uh, remembers the, uh, the HBK and Ric Flair match uh, word for word and play for play. They remember the, uh, I'm sorry, I love you. Cause yep. that's the moment. 1000%. And that's not a knock on wrestling, everybody, by the way. But it's just, that's what wrestling is. We live for those moments. We live for them. So um, hopefully we get some moments out of this. Hope we get some great wrestling out of this. I'm sure we will. I'm pretty much guaranteed that we will. Um, And we'll see what happens with with NXT going forward. But um, when will we be back next? Um, I might be thinking about doing an all-out prediction show. Ooh. I've watched, okay. I'm you're watching be, you're becoming a, more... an AEW stan come on now, I, I'm thinking about <laughs> doing one, I'm thinking about doing one, I'm invested enough in it to to care the only thing that's keeping me out of AEW is just equal opportunities for their women and then I'll be yes. a very happy I mean, camper That that's still my only, uh, my only grab, grab. With, uh, with what happened on Rampage this week but they I w- had the opportunity to put over their women's division and, and, they, and they had a 90 but seconds but hopefully the destination unknown for one Ruby Soho will become destination AEW because I think that's a very good get for AEW so mm-hmm. I hope Ruby Soho is one of them I hope Mercedes Martinez maybe drops over there I would like to see my Australian duo pop up there as well because I think they could flourish in AEW in a 
pretty much characterless division outside of a few. No offense, mm-hmm. but that'd be great characters. And I think that'd add a fresh breath, uh, bre- breath of fresh air. Easy for me to say um, over there. So I'd like to see some more women pop up because we've seen a lot of great signings for men over there and they've been top tier. We haven't really seen a lot for women. Okay. There's not a lot of names going around in there. There isn't. And I'd like to see some more of that. So hopefully as we gear up towards all out in what, two weeks, we're two weeks away from all out. Mm -hmm. September 5th. So hopefully we'll work something out for all out. Um, and then we'll be back for, I guess, extreme rules is the next WWE pay-per-view. So they will get extreme everyone. And then I will not be doing the October show because I will refuse to cover anything Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia related. I, I have never watched a Saudi Arabia show yet. It's on at 3 a.m. here. I don't give a fuck about it. The not clips and the gifts and, and mm-hmm. uh, Tata's world slide. I've seen all that, but I've never watched a, a Saudi Arabia show. I'm not, not going to do a prediction. appeal to me. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, ho- I guess... We'll work something out and we'll do AEW and then Extreme Rules. But anyway. Let's do it. Let's yeah, let's let's do that. Oh, Queen just got in here and we're literally wrapping it up. Oh, Queen. Oh. I mean, you'll be able to watch the 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 uh the replay. And we're talking about AEW. Queen would have loved it. Ah, oh, Queen. That that that's what pricked her ears, I think. She oh, is. she was she like heard the, she was like, the wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> These motherfuckers <laughs> talking AEW. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, that's fine, Queen. Don't worry. You've got bigger things to deal with than silly Absolutely. old us. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Silly old us. But we'll just go and cry about that now, won't we, Mags? Be like fucking Queen picking the picking her baby over us. How dare she? I know, I know. we've no, we've been knocked down that totem pole. Yeah, field. we've gone from we've gone from up here to down here. Yeah. We're basically yeah. the dirt in the ground at this point. <laughs> that 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 vicious queen isn't she one of this, the the nastiest women around? I just can't believe it. Selfish babies, that's all it is. Wow, wow, we hate as, to see as it. Bobby Lashley says, "Fuck them kids." Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> oh Mags, what a way to end this show. Honestly, Queenie, we <laughs> love you. Come on now, we're just playing. Um, it is like the bat signal that AEW and Queen's like, wait a minute, hold up. I've got some, I've got some thoughts. I want to, I want to get my thoughts in, but uh, we're going to wrap things up here. We hope you had a, a fun time. Enjoy takeover. We hope you've enjoyed this weekend of wrestling. Wrap it up with takeover in all kinds of sense of the word. I really do mean that. Um, and we'll see what, what happens next, but, um, we love you all very much and, um, I'll be back streaming. Maybe I'll do something after TakeOver. Maybe I'll play some games or something. Other than that, I'll be back later in the week with some more whatever I do. You'll see it on Twitter, all that kind of good stuff. All right, everyone. See ya.